Welcome to the Raw and Uncensored Ambitious Podcast. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh, yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking boy. Okay, I am going to get down. I'm going to get dirty. I am going to fuck you up with some beautiful truth, you filthy animal. This podcast today is all about why you are not successful. And I know that by the end of this podcast, a lot of you are going to loathe me. A lot of you that liked me before probably want to punch me in the titties, but when I get on this podcast every week, I do it from a place of love because it is time to snap the fuck out of whatever bullshit, hypnotic rhythm, zombie apocalypse, three-dimensional caca that you have found yourself in over the last, I don't know, going on two years, maybe more, depending on you know, if COVID kicked your ass or not, or if you were a fucking loser before. (laughs) So whatever I'm about to say to you, like, if it's triggering you, if you're like this bitch, take a motherfucking mirror and hold it up to your face and look at yourself and say, you are your own worst enemy. Because if I'm triggering you, it's because you really deep down inside truly feel this way. So many people come to me on Instagram, they come to me on the Ambitious app, they email me, and they're always like, why am I not successful? Why am I not where I desire to be? Why am I not, you know, further ahead than I am now? And I've been in this industry, in the coaching industry for over 23 years, I think that it is now. Yeah, 23 years. And I have seen some shit. Okay. I have worked with every age, every demographic, every sex, every ethnicity. I mean, like you name it, every religion, every sexual orientation. I have worked with Grammys. I have worked with Miss USA's, Miss Universes, uh, seven figure entrepreneurs. I mean, you name it, I've done it all. Okay. And I'm here to tell you that This goes across the board, what I'm about to say. So I didn't number these things. I just sat down on Sunday. This is usually when I do my best work. I'm sitting, I'm having my coffee on a Sunday, and I write my podcasts. And then when I have a chance, I hop in my closet. Won't be my closet for long because I'm going to actually build a podcast studio in my house over the next month because I'm going to start having um, guests and all kinds of really cool stuff. So like hold your... Hold your titties for that. But in the meantime, I'm I'm in my closet. You guys have seen it. If you guys want, uh, follow me on Instagram. I always do videos like how glam my life is while I'm in the closet sitting on my ass. But on Sundays is what I do. I sit and I think of all the things that people have been asking me, what people have been struggling with, and I compile the podcast from there. So it's Monday, November 1st. We have eight weeks left of 2021. And let me tell you something right now. I am not going into 2022 being a bitch ass punk. Okay. I'm going into 2022 living my most ambitious life. I am not going to allow anyone or anything steal any of my happiness, my joy, or my success any longer. I don't give a fuck what happens in this world. I don't give a fuck what happens in this country. I don't give a fuck what happens to anybody. I am going to the next level and I hope that you are on board with this too. So all the things I'm about to say to you, if you're taking it personal, if it's hitting you down in the in the lady bits, if it's triggering you, if it's making you hot, the best thing to do is to hold the mirror up to yourself and say, okay, what do I have to change? What do I have to do to be the most ambitious self, to be the HBIC of my most ambitious life? Okay? 
Don't be at me. Oh, Katie, you're such a bitch. You're so mean. You don't understand. You don't have little kids. You don't have this. You don't have that. Shut the fuck up. Okay. There's people who are CEOs, women who are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies who are, you know, in amazing shape, getting their eight hours sleep, taking care of themselves and have like seven children. So I don't want to hear this. Okay. I don't want to hear any excuses. Please, please, please. I'm, if you email me your excuses, I'm just going to pretty much delete it. (laughs) So don't waste your fucking time. Okay. Why are you not successful? I'm just going to go down the gamut. Okay. So let's just go. Let's just fucking do this. Okay. (laughs) Let's just do it. Number one, the most obvious thing is you are a lazy motherfucker. You are lazy. I mean, I don't even know what else to say. Like you're just you're just chilling too much. You're out with friends too much. You're drinking too much. You're making excuses too much. You're allowing way too many fucking distractions. You know, like if you don't have the life that you desire to have and you're fucking chilling all the time, like I see all these girls on Instagram and they're always like chilling, just chilling, 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 watching TV again, chilling. I'm like, you're a fucking bum. If I was a bum, I wouldn't be fucking chilling. You know, if you see me now and I am watching TV or am I, I, I am sitting by the fire or I am doing something fun, I have earned it, okay? I have worked the last 23 years of my life, my ass and my titties off to be Katie motherfucking Boyd, okay? I can chill all the fuck I want. And guess what? I don't even chill that much because I'm a sick motherfucker and I always know that there's room for improvement. So the difference between resting because you're weary and resting because you need a break and chilling are two different things, okay? I rest when I'm weary. I rest when I'm exhausted. I rest when I'm run down. I I rest when I need a break because I know myself and I know like, okay, if you don't, if you don't chill out for a second, you're going to end up sick or something's going to happen, right? But a lot of y'all motherfuckers are lazy bitches. So number one, the reason why you're not successful is you're too fucking lazy and you're chilling too much and that's just the end of the story. The second, the next is you never start, right? Wayne Gretzky was a hockey player and he said, you miss a hundred shots that you never take. You miss the hundred shots that you never take, right? So a lot of people in my industry, a lot of women that I work with, a lot of women that I follow on social media or that I'm acquaintances with, they talk a good game, but they have no, nothing to back it up. They they talk a lot of shit, but they have no fucking backup. And I'm the kind of person that's like, I may talk the talk, but I also walk the walk. And when I'm not walking the walk, I'm not talking the talk. I'm not like motivating people and I'm a fu- being a fucking piece of shit. So you have to start. You have to know what your goals are and you actually have to do the things that it takes to get to the next level. You actually have to start. You know, I have so many uh, people that I know and they're like, I really want to start a business. I really want to go to the next level. I really want to release this 60 pounds that I put on, you know, over the last two years in COVID. Um, I really want to find the, you know, the man of my dreams. I really want to have a baby. I really want... Like they want and they want and they want and they want, but then they don't do the things that it takes to get those things. So the second thing, the next thing, you you never start in the first place. You never start in the first place. The next, you spend too much motherfucking time on social media. So as you know, I have a social media app called the Ambitious App on Mighty Networks. I love my app. I go on it first thing in the morning. I check it maybe once in the middle of the day and I go on last part of the night before I go to bed. I am not on social media all goddamn day scrolling. Did you know that the average American checks their social media over 20 times a day? 20 times a day. What you have to do is you have to be intentional with your social media. So if you are like me and you're using your social media to motivate, to inspire, to educate, to entertain, to get your word out there, to spread, like for me, it's the ambitious movement, right? I intentionally post. If you ever noticed, if you follow me on Instagram or if you're on my Mighty Networks app, the ambitious app, I'm never going to talk about things that I don't know about. I'm always going to stay in my corners, right? So if you've been following in bitches for a really long time, you know that I talk about the six life makers and breakers. That's all I'm ever going to talk about. 
I'm not going to talk about anything else. Yeah, sometimes Matt will come on my Instagram or Pearl or, you know, little like memes, funny things back and forth, but I'm always going to stick to the same stuff, right? So many people are going on social media and they're just mindlessly scrolling. They're not being social. They're not connecting to the people that, you know, inspire them. They are playing the like the game of I'm not enough. Look at her. She's so pretty. Oh, look at this person doing this over there. It's a waste of fucking time. And it's actually holding you back from being the most ambitious that you can be. So start putting some limits on social media. So like for me, the first 30 minutes to an hour of the day, you will not see my ass on social. The first 30 minutes to hour of my day are spent on me and my non-negotiable morning practices. And then when I'm ready and I've done everything for myself, like workout, like meditate, like do my breath work, right? Like set my intentions for the day, my ambitious abundance affirmation, my blessing, my, my, all those things, right? That I talk about. Then I will open my social media and I will post what I want to post. I will do what I need to do and I get off. I maybe spend like 10 minutes on there in the morning, just kind of saying hi to my people and doing my thing. Then like in the middle of the day, when I take a break from my workflow, I'll probably check it again. I'll check Mighty Network, see if any of my mentorships, my mentorship ladies have, you know, inboxed me there and if they're needing something and I answer their questions and I do the same thing with Instagram and then I go back to my workflow and then like after I'm done with all of my stuff, then I might sit on Instagram and Mighty Networks for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, but that is it. That is all that there is. I'm not on there scrolling, looking at other people in my industry and being jealous because they, you know, they got this book deal or they are speaking in this place or they're doing a collaboration with that person. Like, I don't care. I put my fucking head down and I do my work and I don't get distracted by what everyone else is doing because that is their blueprint. That is their life contract. That has nothing to do with me and it certainly has nothing to do with you. So you're trying to look at other people's lives and you're trying to replicate that same thing. And it's like, that will never happen because it's not meant for you. If it was meant for you, God and the universe would put that in your life. So get the fuck off of social media. And when you do go on, be super duper duper intentional. And if you are on Mighty Networks and you don't know how to check your DMs, I DM people, I I DM all of you all the time on there. And it's always for good reason. So if you are on Mighty Networks, um, head on over to Mighty Networks and look in your direct message box because you probably have a bunch of messages from from me o- for over the last couple months that you've been on there. Um, and then just be intentional with your social media. The next thing why you're not successful is you never finish what you start. Remember, starting is easy. Finishing is the hard part, right? And success doesn't happen overnight. So, so many people like, for example, like today is our first day of Ambitious in 28. So all of my protocol girls that work with me every month, I started feeling like the natives were restless. I'm like, what is going on here? And I just feel like people are just starting to freak out like, fuck, you know, 2022 is in eight weeks and what the hell happened kind of thing. So I know that when people are feeling like this, they need like really concrete rules and boundaries, and they have to almost get like militant for a second. So I said to all the girls um, on my protocol, I said, hey, why don't we bring back in Bitches 28? I will do it with you, and we'll do it the whole entire month of November, and we'll, you know, for Thanksgiving Day, if you do celebrate Thanksgiving, you can have your like one meal that day be Thanksgiving dinner, okay? The girls were pumped, so we started today. I'm on a 48-hour fast, okay? I don't eat until Tuesday evening, And that's just like one of like the, I think we do four 48-hour fasts and we do two 72-hour fasts as a group. And then on the other days we do OMAD, which is one meal a day. And then on the other days we do two MAD, which is two meals a day. When I have these women do these programs, they can release between 20 and 30, 40, even 40 pounds in a month. Their skin clears up, their hormones regulate, their sleep is better, their sex drive comes back. They're, I'm like, they just glow, okay? And a lot of people, they start and they're like, oh my God, I feel so good. And then guess what? Four days in, they're like, fuck it, this is too hard. 
And then what they do is they go, you know what? I'm just going to be, I'm just going to say who cares. And like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll just do whatever I want. I won't work out. I won't do my non-negotiable spiritual practices. I won't do my fast. I won't do my like healthy food. I'll just start again on Monday. And then you know what happens? Every fucking Monday for the rest of your life until you goddamn die is a new meal plan, a new diet, a new gimmick, a new pill to swallow. Just think about that. Don't you feel like a fucking loser? Don't you feel like a fucking loser that your whole life is just one unending chain of I'll start again on Monday? Wake the fuck up. Does that sound ambitious at all? No, it doesn't. So when you don't finish what you start, it actually does something to your mind. It actually starts to fuck with your your neurology and the way that your synapses fire. So part of the thing that we say, part of um, the Ambitious 28 program is I have the girls say, my word is my law and my self-worth depends on it. Okay, let's say it together. My word is law and my self-worth depends on it. Because every time you make a promise to yourself and then 48 hours later, you're back to the old fucking low life piece of shit energy that you've always had. You just keep telling yourself you're not worthy enough. You're not good enough. You're not anything enough for me to actually be disciplined enough to take you to the next level so you can be the head bitch in control of your most ambitious life. So one of the reasons why you're not successful is you never finish what you start. The next thing is you always want instant gratification. I cannot tell you how many people that I've coached over the years that want to be a coach, that want to be a health coach or a wellness coach or a transformational coach or a motivational coach or whatever, and they're like pissed off because they've been working with me for six months and they still aren't Katie motherfucking Boyd. And I'm like, bitch, I've been doing this for 25 fucking years. And the amount of sacrifice and the amount of free shit and pro bono shit that I've done in my life would blow your fucking skirt off. Okay. You know, I started Katie Boyd's Misfit Club when I was 18 years old. I started coaching friends. I just started doing it for fun on the side. I was going to college, right? I was going to get my degree. And then it just parlayed into this other thing. And even like 10 years ago, remember, I had a television show on E! Style and Bravo called Wicked Fit. I was the official trainer to like Miss Universe and Miss USA and Miss America. And I did all of these things. And guess what I had to do to be that person? I had to train all these girls for for free. No one paid me to train Miss Massachusetts. No one paid me to train, you know, Miss Girls in Miss America or Miss USA or whomever. The I had to coach all these girls for free for years, for over a decade. And then the quid pro quo was, okay, you're the official coach and you give them all this free shit and you give them all these free supplements and you give them all these free spray tans and you do their meal plans, and you do their workout plans. I can't even tell you the hundreds, the hundreds of fucking hours, probably thousands of hours. If I actually sit and I get my calculator out, the thousands of hours, okay, that I've coached people for free. And these motherfucking bitches think that they're going to be Katie Boyd in 2.3 seconds. I fucking laugh. I laugh. I'm like, this is a joke. This is going to be a joke. Is is Ashton Kutcher going to pop out of the motherfucking closet and say he, he's punking me when I hear this shit? They don't understand that you have to water the root to yield the fruit. You don't wake up one day and you're a multi-seven figure, you know, entrepreneur. This took me 23 to 25 years to get to this place. And I'm still not even close to where I desire to be in my career. So cut the shit with the instant gratification. Anything that is worth having takes time. You have to nurture it. You have to fall down. You have to fuck up. You have to cry yourself to sleep. You have to lose friends over it. You have, I mean, like I could go on and on and on, but like, the, one of the reasons why you're not successful is you want the instant gratification. And you look at all of these people on Instagram and social media and on TV and you go, oh, wow, must be so nice to be them. Look how lucky they are. Lucky? You didn't see the 20 fucking three years of my life where I literally went through fucking hell. You have no idea what I went through. Hell. Abusive relationships with men. Abusive relationships with colleagues and coworkers and bosses. 
literally fucking falling out after falling out with all these different people over jealousy and gossip and all this crap. Don't you understand why I wrote in bitches? If you've read the book, which if you haven't, go pick it up. But if you read the book and you know I talk about all these things like gossiping and all this shit, it's because I have done it and I've also been part of the shit end of the stick when it came to gossip. So I don't want to hear it. Instant gratification is for pussies and it's bullshit and, and it's like a unicorn. It does not fucking exist. The next one, the next reason why you're not successful is you have too many motherfucking excuses. There will never be the right time. There will never be the perfect time ever, ever, ever. We started A28P. I had like five girls inbox me. Oh, this happened. My kid got sick. My pussy fell off and ran away and got hit by a car. Um, this happened. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I'm like, I don't, I have a headache. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do ambitious in 28. I'm like, I go, okay. I don't give a fuck. If you want to be a mediocre bitch, be a fucking mediocre bitch. It's not my business. It's not my life. You, you have too many goddamn excuses. You're a walking excuse. There's never going to be the perfect time. There's never going to be the right time. You're always going to have some fucking bullshit. You're always going to be afraid. There's always going to be some drama. There's always going to be something fucking pulling you back in the bucket. You have to be stronger than your excuses. Dude, I have excuses all the time. Like it's four, it's almost five o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't even started my work day really. I have lives to do. I have all these things to do tonight. And I want to eat so bad because I'm hungry. Because I ate too, way too much Halloween candy yesterday. But guess what? I won't cave because I know that my excuses are what is going to hold me back and keep me from leveling up and scaling my company and scaling my body and scaling my mindset and scaling all the things that must scale for you to live a life of a 1% ambitious woman. So no more excuses. Unless you want to just be a mediocre motherfucker, none of my business. That's fine. But the reason why you're not successful is because you're full of caca. You're full of excuses. The next one is you feel entitled. No one owes you motherfucking shit. No one owes you shit. I have people that come to me all the time and they're like, oh, you know, you have a lot of connections. Oh, you have, you know, all these people. Can you like hook me up? Can you do this with me? Can you do that for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? I'm like, who the fuck did shit for me? Give me a fucking break. You're nobody. You're nobody special. Just like I'm nobody special. Everything that I have succeeded at and everything that I have in my life, that's incredible. I had to do the work. Yes, of course, people helped me along the way, but they weren't doing it for free. And they weren't doing it out of the goodness of their motherfucking heart, unless they were like my family. And even they wanted something, okay? So stop being an entitled bitch. No one owes you shit. People are always asking me for shit. Like they think I owe them something. And I'm like, who the fuck do you fucking think you are? Like, there has to be some quid pro quo in this. Like, okay, yeah, I'll do this for you, but you're going to do this for me. I'll do this for you, but you're going to give me a cut of that. I'll do this for you, but you're going to do this other thing for me. Like, stop being so fucking entitled. And entitlement is one of the biggest reasons why people are not successful. All right. The next reason why you're not successful is you obsess over unimportant aspects, which is pretty much perfectionism, which is if you peel the onion down to the knob is fear. Okay. Like everyone's like, oh, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I, as soon as I hear that from someone, I cringe because I'm like, this person is going to be a fucking nightmare to work with. They're going to be um, a nightmare to have on my team. They're going to be a nightmare client because perfectionism is not cute. Perfectionism is rooted in fear. Their fear of not being enough. Their fear of being criticized. They're, they're fearful of being unworthy, of failure, of all these things. And then they nitpick over things that really don't fucking matter. You know, sometimes being done is better than being perfect. Sometimes doing things messy is what you have to do to go to the next level. I have a girlfriend who is a multi seven figure earner and she's an online coach. Okay. She told me a couple weeks ago that she has sold pro 
she has sold products like online virtual programs that are products without even doing them yet. So like she made seven figures selling a product that wasn't even fucking created. And I was like, you know what? You're a ballsy motherfucking bitch, but like, I got to give you props because like that's fucking fearless. And then like, maybe that's a tactic that she uses to get the let out to like force herself to create, which is pretty fucking cool. Like, that's not how I roll, but like kudos to her. But like, I was like, you know what? There's a lesson in this and thank you. So cut the shit, stop obsessing over unimportant tiddlywink, little tiny, you know, like people, like for instance, like when I was writing my book, Ambitious, I'm not a writer and I don't give a fuck about punctuation. I don't care about grammar. I don't even speak fucking English correctly. I don't really care. Okay. I get, I'm getting by just fine. Okay. I, I'm, I'm paid thousands of dollars to speak all over the world. Like I think I'm good. And you know, what's so fucking crazy about that is that there was parts of me that didn't want to write in bitches. Cause I was like, Oh my God. But like, what if my grammar's not perfect? What if my punctuation's fucked up? Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? You hire a fucking editor. And guess what? I did hire an editor. She has edited New York Times bestselling books and she still fuck, fucking didn't do everything perfectly. There was still typos. There was still um, punctuation that was missing because guess what? She's a human motherfucking being. And I had like three people after her read the book and miss the punctuation or miss the grammar or miss the spelling. And after I sold out of my first round of books, I fixed the typos. I fixed the errors. And then the second edition came out and though, and guess what? There's still shit that's wrong in there. Who cares? My fear of not being a perfect writer wasn't going to hold me back from writing this book that I know would start a revolution in, in, in female empowerment industry. That's it. So stop obsessing over all this bullshit. The next one, the reason why you're not successful is you never leave your comfort zone. Remember, nothing good in life or worth having comes from a comfort zone. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nada. (laughs) Nothing. Okay? You have to break out of your comfort zone. And everything that I ever did in my life, whether it was compete for a a national pageant and get my body to like 12% body fat and be shredded, or have a television show on E and style and Bravo that was syndicated all over the fucking world or train girls to get ready for Miss USA or Miss Universe or Miss Teen USA or Miss America. All of those things scared the motherfucking shit out of me, scared the shit out of me. I was like, oh my God, who am I to do this? I'm I'm a fraud. I'm a phony. I'm not enough. I'm not worthy of this. People are going to find out that I'm a piece of shit, that I'm a liar, that I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. I had that total imposter syndrome but I would just tell the voice in my head to shut the fuck up because I knew it was the devil. I knew it was fear. I knew it was enemy energy. I knew it was three-dimensional. I knew it was the darkness and I wasn't going to allow that to hold me back from greatness. I wasn't going to. So you gotta fucking bust out of your comfort zone. You have to. You have to, have to, have to. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We're going to do a part two next week because I have so much more stuff to talk about. But in the meantime, don't forget that we have the Ambitious Academy 12-week program that is launching January 3rd. If you're interested in becoming part of the Ambitious Academy and you want to take your life to the next level in 2022, head on over to kbmoc.com. Not only sign up for the community, which is the Ambitious app, but sign up for our weekly emails because I'm going to be having these incredible coaching calls that are coming up every week. And I'm going to coach you, but I'm not only going to coach you, but I'm going to teach you a little bit deeper on all things Ambitious Academy so you can make sure that it is a right fit for you. That's number one. And number two, we're having our first live event in almost six months. It's the Ambitious 2022 kickoff. It is going to be on Saturday, January 8th. It is a full day event at Katie Boyd's Miss Fit Club in Hudson, New Hampshire. You don't want to miss it. And we're going to have an open and closed cart because space is limited. And once it's sold out, same thing with Ambitious Academy. You're going to have to wait until the next event. And our next event isn't until April. 
okay? So head on over to kbmc.com, sign up for the Ambitious Academy, um, all things Ambitious Academy, the calls, sign up for our community, the Ambitious app, and also sign up for our weekly email so we can keep you in the loop of all things that are going on in the Ambitious world. Okay, don't forget to stay ambitious and I'll see you next week here for the second half of why you are not successful. Love you all and stay ambitious.